In these videos, I will take a look at some of the comments that you, the viewer, have shared with me. Some of these comments may be posted on my YouTube channel. Some of them may not be, depending upon their content. I use this as an opportunity to answer questions, address criticisms, and acknowledge criticisms, of course, and direct the conversation, keep it going in the manner of which this YouTube channel is intended, meaning it is a grammar channel. This is a channel to talk about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public by Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. And so that's the main purpose of this channel. So if you see a comment in this comments video that has not been posted on my channel, I'm probably using it as an example as to what not to post in the comments field. This is definitely a learning place, a place for learning where I teach not only the grammar, but also the psychology of the grammar. One other thing, I don't ever take anything personal. It's never personal. Although it may seem like it is at times, it's not. It's not at all. And I highly recommend everyone out there commenting, follow the same protocol. Don't take anything personal that I say. What you put in is what you get out. The energy that you bring here, I will most likely either give back to you, maybe a little bit, or maybe a thousandfold. It just depends upon how you approach me. This is my vessel. There are terms and conditions. If you comply with them, Everything's peachy. If you don't, well, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. Without further ado, let's get to the comments. Welcome to this edition of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewer's Comments. I'm your host, Cole and Jason. I'm Matthew Cole and Glass. You may call me Jason. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one uh, because, as you see the comment in front of you from someone named colon Sean hyphen Daniel colon space Taylor. This could be an example of what I would call a very subtle and clever type of trolling. Now the reason I'm prefacing uh, this video by saying that is because in my five or so years of YouTube experience of putting out almost 500 videos, vetting literally hundreds if not thousands of comments because all of my comments here are vetted. Uh, a comment does not get published unless I authorize it. It's my vessel. I'm the master of the vessel. There are terms and conditions to the comments field. And I'll say right off the bat, I don't think Sean has read the terms and conditions going by the comments that he leaves and sort of the demeanor that he exhibits. Now in five years or so of, of doing this, I've only run into this type of personality maybe once, maybe twice, out of the hundreds of people that have, that have commented on the channel. And maybe three or four years ago, uh, this may have sort of knocked me off my square so to speak. But now I kind of see it for what it is, even though I'm not 100% sure that is what it is. I will show you what I'm talking about when I say that this could perhaps be a subtle form of trolling. Sort of the, the now space vampire type of trolling where someone leaves comments not really having anything to do with grammar per se having to do with grammar mechanics, asking questions, actually genuinely wanting to learn the grammar, but asking other things, small things, and then disagreeing, and then sort of using a low-key, uh, down-low, uh, how can you say it, like snide or sarcastic type of comment, but then at the end of the comment, like putting a peace sign or, or a heart or something like that to try and like negate what was said before. Again, like I said, I've only run into this like maybe two times in five years. But without further ado, let's get into it. So in this particular comment, uh, Sean says, why do you say concern when DMW, and I can 
logically guess he means David Wood Miller, says it consequence. I think he means it's or it is. For the Sean Daniel of the Taylor, thanks. Uh, well, I can see by the comment itself that Sean either doesn't know anything about correct sentence structure or they're a very basic beginner. And so what I will do for Sean in this instance is instead of maybe suggesting that he go and study the videos where I do give closure to this very issue, I gave closure to it a few years ago. And by the way, this individual says he has studied all of my videos so that he had to have come across it. But I digress. So instead of saying that, I'll just show it once again why I use the word concern rather than consequence. So here you see the word consequence. Just if you type in the word consequence at etymologyonline.com, you will see that it just says logical inference, conclusion, result, to follow after. So you have the element CON, which means with together, combined with sequi from Proto Indo European SEKW, which means to follow. So it simply means to follow together. So when you're using correct sentence structure, you start with the cause. And then if you say consequence, then that doesn't really give closure to what comes after that cause. It just means that whatever comes after it comes after it. It follows it. It doesn't really give any closure as to what the function is of that fact positioned by of the. So I along with doing work with my tutor, colon, Raven, hyphen, Farhad, hyphen, Tohidi, colon, Eferin, we decided to use this word, concern, which comes from, again, C-O-N, which means with together, and then from Proto-Indo-European, K-R-E-I, which means to see, thus discriminate, distinguish, Later on, as you can see here, it was modified. But what we're talking about is this. Belong to, touch, mix. So with together, with the mixture, with together to discriminate, uh, sorry, to discriminate, to distinguish. So you have your cause, which could be for the claimant's knowledge, and then you say of the facts. The concern, the cause, is the facts. The facts are distinguished. Instead of just saying the facts follow that, now you're giving closure to what it's concerned with. I find that it's a much better fit than consequence. Consequence is more like a, a general thing. Now another comment uh, from Sean says, I sense that I've been totally raped by my government for the past 31 years of my life without my consent. Now I do totally comprehend individuals who have this type of mindset. Uh, I, at one time, possessed the same mindset. I've been on this earth for almost 51 years. And... Uh, I have experience in studying things like common law and UCC codes and the legal system. And, you know, when I was in high school, one of my favorite classes was law education. Uh, at one time, I actually considered studying to be an attorney. And so I do cognize this type of attitude, so to speak. Uh, but when I learned correct sentence structure and you know, via my tutor, Colin Raven, I also learned the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, which are judge mechanics. I then realized that it wasn't the system, per se, that needed to change or be adjusted or fixed. It was me. Okay? 
if you go through your life thinking that uh, you're a victim, that the system is has got you down and it's holding you down and there's nothing you can do about it and so on and so forth, then you're always going to have that mentality. You're always going to have that mentality where you're ready to fight the system, you know, and things like that. And it's like when you look at the history of, of mankind, whatever you think of history, whether it's a story or whether you think it's true or whatever, it's been a cycle of fighting and war throughout the whole the whole history. So my attitude and the conclusions I came to were, well, what if you extricate yourself from that type of thinking and start thinking something different? Start thinking in terms of peace and neutrality. Start thinking in terms of, well, contract is by consent. So if anyone's going to take accountability for anything that happened in the last 51 years, well, at least the 51 years of that, that where I was an adult and able to think for myself, then it is me. I'm not going to blame the system. Uh, I had choices in this matter to educate myself, to do whatever, you know, I was going to do. Agree to it or not agree to it. There's always a choice. And so once I did that, then other avenues started opening up to me. Uh, but this type of mentality, and there are other comments that I haven't published where he literally talks about uh, fighting the system, which, I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, I mean, if that's floats your boat, then uh, you're going to get more than you can handle, like, I'm pretty sure, you know, and good luck with that, because I don't really know anyone who uh, <clears throat> is successful with things like that. It's like, I've said in the past, dealing with the fiction is, is like, if you think of the fiction as a pig in a pigsty, it doesn't matter how much correct sentence structure you know or common law or whatever you're going to use. Once you step into that pigsty, it's up to you how long you want to wrestle with that pig. Pig doesn't care. Doesn't care at all. The pig enjoys it. And rest assured, when you step in there, by the time you step out, if you are able to step out, you're going to be covered in mud and poop. That's all there is to it. How muddy do you want to get? How poopy do you want to get? I mean, if, if you enjoy that, if you enjoy fighting and, and having that type of mindset, there's room for you too. But what I teach is autonomy based upon peace and neutrality. And I do not contract with warlike parties or parties that whose volition it is to fight things. I'm done with that. It's not necessary. It's completely not necessary. And I found that through my five years of navigation using correct sentence structure. And again, you know, Sean obviously doesn't know correct sentence structure, so how would he be able to cognize that unless he would actually learn the grammar, which, as of yet, he has not decided to do. I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I do have a bit of a head cold here, so apologize for my voice. So I did... Uh, type up some responses, some kuleana to Sean, and then his kuleana to that was, show me the contract then, or did you not need one for that? And he's talking about where I said that I consented to pay a uh, tax to a state entity uh, to help out my fellow mankind for things like roads, schools, uh, maintaining, you know, equipment, to service those things and so on and so forth and pay the employees. Really, Jason? And then he does this. So this is what I mean by low-key, like sarcasm or condescension. You didn't choose to contribute to anything. I really, really wish that was the case. So now he's actually telling me what I did or didn't choose to contribute to, which, again, if he would study the grammar, he would realize most likely very quickly that that's a no-no. Never assume for what someone else does or doesn't do or the volition of what they're doing. One may only make claims for oneself. If one wants to make a claim for someone else, as in they should or shouldn't do this, or no, that's not what really happened. This is what happened. When they don't even know you and have no personal contract with you, that is assumption, presumption, that is opinion, and that is definitely condescension in a way. It's sort of like a Christian that uh, 
where they want to try and convert you to their religion and you say thanks but no thanks and then they'll say I'll pray for you <laughs> I really wish that was the case for us humans the world would be awesome it was taken from you by force that is not true that is 100% not true it is the same practically wherever you live uh, how would he know about where it is that I live or you know what happens where other people live unless he himself has been there because I personally know people who navigate through this earth who don't participate with the fiction system in that way and I'd like to also add that and I've shared this in uh, I think maybe one or two other videos that I have um, stop the bureaucratic trespass of a tax entity a state tax entity uh, using correct sentence structure so you know I do with the honor balance of the honor and the grace want to contribute to the state entities that do maintain the roads that I drive on and that I use and the employees that work 8 to 12 hours a day to maintain those roads I certainly would have give to those things so that I can drive on roads that are decent you know so on and so forth but uh, what I will not participate with are interest in penalties. And I'll leave it at that. And I worked it out so that uh, that's exactly uh, what I did. I it was steward of my contracts now. Uh, everything is by consent. So, and again, Sean, uh, this is, is uh, by my knowledge, on this YouTube channel, which is a grammar channel, what you're talking about has nothing to do with grammar. And if you would read the terms and conditions of the comments fields, then you would know that this is a violation of those terms and conditions. And, you know, I, I wasn't sure about what you were doing at first, so that's why I sort of was trying to, in a very gentle way, direct you towards the psychology of the peace and neutrality. And last but not least... He comes with this, asking about, nothing about grammar, just about who is the artist on that track playing. And then I say, you may find the artist credited in the video description, which I leave a link in the video description as to where to find the music of the artist playing in the video. I always give credit to the, to the artist of the music. And then I think I actually put in brackets the name of the artist in the description. And then they ask, where's the video description now I find it very difficult to believe that someone who claims to have been living and breathing for what 30 31 years I think he said doesn't know where to find a video description for a video on YouTube something that I'm sure they've been using for a while <laughs> So I responded, my Kuliana was, I recommend using Google and typing where are YouTube video descriptions located. Google is a wonderful tool. Happy researching. And so therefore, until further notice, I will not be publishing anything from this individual in the comments field unless it has to do with grammar. Because I definitely gave the gift of my now space, probably more so than necessary, to accommodate this individual, but they continue to persist in these very subtle trolling ways. Now, again, I'm not convinced that they are a troll. They just might be this type of personality. I don't know. As I said, I've only encountered this type of personality once or twice in the hundreds and hundreds of people uh, that I've communicated with over the last five years. But in any case, it's a good learning experience for me and hopefully for the viewer and uh, how to navigate these types of things in your own life when you encounter these types of personalities. Next comment comes from Ergo Desk. He said, has anyone seen or heard people speaking exclusively in syntax grammar? And of course, I'm sure they mean correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. And I would probably, I mean, I can't speak for anyone else, but I can tell you, Ergo Desk, whoever you may be, that I have never, ever seen it. And I've had plenty of opportunities to see it. 
As far as I know, I am the only individual in my life or biosphere that is capable of doing that. And, of course, I don't really do it because what's the point? When I was first learning this, I would go out into supermarkets and I would speak correct sentence structure, you know, to the cashier, you know, for the claim of the quest is with the price of the goods uh, with this query by this claimant period, you know, this goofy things like that. And uh, they just look at me like, wow. So I soon very quickly realized that that is actually a form of trolling in and of itself, even if you don't know you're doing it. Why would you, for example, walk into an English-speaking store where everyone speaks English and then speak Japanese to the cashier? They're not going to know what the hell you're talking about. So are you there to be understood or are you there to be misunderstood? Are you there to communicate clearly or are you there to communicate you know, in a very cloudy, muddy way? It's all about easy communication and contract. If you're there to make clear, correct, efficient, concise contract, that's one thing. But if you're there to confuse people or some other volition, then that is malicious contracting. That's trickery. So I really try to be cognizant of the way that I speak and the way I convey myself to people based upon their knowledge level or my perception of what their knowledge level is as far as this technology goes. Next comment comes from Di Cameron, who is, uh, at this point in time, one of my best students. And I do have quite a few of them at this point. And they say, thanks, Jason. At first, I didn't see the value in the viewers' comments playlist. Now I find these videos very valuable. You clarify many of the repeated mistakes, subtleties, and the ways we students can best interact with you and the technology. I appreciate that. I appreciate your appreciation of the value that I try to put into these videos. Um, and this is a great example of someone who conducts themselves with honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule, and rule equal. Um, they don't come on all assumptive and presumptive as some people do. Now, I realize that the beginners of which die is definitely not a beginner. Uh, they, they're going to come on like that because that's just how they're used to interacting with other people on the Internet. They're not used to having to adhere to an etiquette, a style of etiquette, or actually respecting someone else's vessel. Uh, but here you're going to have to learn it very quickly or you're out. Next comment comes from longtime viewer, Sovereign Entity. And they say, thank you, Jason. Well done. I commend you. I'm curious as to why they put the COM in brackets, because COM is positive performance. And they're writing an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun anyways. I mean, they're writing in a fictitious conveyance of grammar. So why they're using brackets, is, I don't understand. Uh, actually, I do understand. Probably because they have little to no closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, which is interesting to me because they've been here for a very long time. So that's something to, for me to keep in mind, a note to put uh, in my notebook about sovereign entity. So they say, in this now space, I, and in colon space, command that there be no more bickering. So this individual sovereign entity seems to think that they have some sort of uh, authority uh, with this thing called the quantum community. Well, here's the thing. If you don't have any knowledge, how can you have any authority? Uh, and if you're commanding yourself, sovereign entity, that you're not going to bicker anymore, well then, it sounds as though you are being unsuccessful with that command by virtue of this comment in and of itself being, <laughs> being offered to me, that mankind unite and cleanse the earth of all that do not serve the light. Ah, and so it is. 
Lilith's Day. So this individual basically wants to force everyone to do what they want them to do. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is definitely a fiction tactic and fiction mindset, psychology. Uh, the fiction likes to force you to do things you don't want to do. In order there, for there to be light, there must be darkness. I mean, there must be a balance in all things. So that's a pretty big psychological hurdle, especially with regards to this grammar. And if sovereign entity, eh, you know, with all the time they've already put, already put into, you know, watching this channel and doing whatever else, if they ever actually decide to sit down and learn this stuff, I'm pretty sure they will eventually come to the conclusion that I just offered. Next comment comes from AR, and they say, just a note, I am seeing channel after channel posting about YouTube cracking down on things left and right, just throwing a blanket over everyone. Not sure what the ultimate prerogative is besides or how it all works. Not sure what the ultimate prerogative is besides or how it all works. But... Just sharing what I've noticed in the last two weeks, it seems to be an issue with almost everyone that I have watched. And it's made mention of battling YouTube. Um, yeah, that's interesting, AR. I'd like to make it clear to you, to the public, and to YouTube that I'm not battling anybody. There's no fighting going on here. There's no battling. Uh, they just, on a regular basis, flag my videos for some reason. And then it's just up to me to simply challenge that. And then they take the flag out. They rescind it and say, yeah, your video is fine. And they remove the flag. 100% successful every single time. It's just become a, a daily thing, you know, with the videos that I post. I know that they're going to flag it. And then I'm going to challenge it. And then they're going to acquiesce to my wishes. It's just how it goes. I guess it's just a part, part and parcel of using the YouTube platform. It's not my platform. It's their platform. I'm a steward of it. They allow me to be here to do this. So until such time as they don't. Next comment comes from Razvan. And Razvan says, For this claimant sensation of the serenity mind state is with the claim of the pleasure with this truthful equity psychology by this tutor's performance. Now keep in mind he did put it in parentheses, so it's not even here. It's not even on the page. Having said that, <coughs> it's quite obviously Rosvon's uh, attempt at using correct sentence structure, so let's look at it in such a light. So he has, for this claimant sensation, there's no hyphen in between claimant and sensation. That's supposed to be a compound fact. But because there is no hyphen, everything has put, put into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun by leaving out that one hyphen. So now we move on. We have the verb followed by the possessive, followed by the concern of the pleasure, which I think he means P-L-E-A-S-U-R-E, -E, with this truthful equity psychology by this tutor's performance. Now, when you're looking at this, it says, by this tutor's performance. If you're just reading this as correct sentence structure, you know, keeping in mind that the, the hyphen is perhaps a typo, the missing hyphen is a typo. Tutor's performance, who is the tutor? We don't know who the tutor is. So because Rosvon is the one, the claimant making the claim, he would be the tutor unless he clarifies otherwise. Otherwise, it's not clarified who the tutor is. We have no idea who this individual is talking about. Because when you read it backwards, it says, for this tutor's performance of this truthful equity psychology is with the pleasure of the claim, with the serenity mind state by this claimant sensation. No one else is mentioned in here. Only one individual, one entity is mentioned, and that's the claimant and the tutor and the sensation and things like that, and the claims. So, Rosvon's basically saying that he's a tutor. So, 
it's always good to keep those things in mind and clarify exactly who it is you're talking about and who is possessing the sensations uh, or the psychology or, or so or the performance even. Make sure if there are two entities being differentiated that you separate the two within your own sentence. Thanks for the comment, Rosman. Next comment comes from David Miller, and he says, Poisonous fruit from the poisonous tree. Defiantly hear the underpinning to the sentiments of the phrase, one opinion, two certification. Defiantly. I wonder if David Miller knows what defiant means in the fiction. Because that really Unless it's a typo and he means definitely, then it would make sense to me. But he put defiantly. For the cognition tells me where there is modification there. T-H-E-I-R, I think they mean T-H-E-R-E, is change. And change is just a thought while navigating think here. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I don't know what this individual is attempting to convey here. The thing that I will comment on is the poisonous fruit from the poisonous tree. That's definitely a, an opinion, because if you have, in the forest, if you have, or the jungle, if you have a tree that has poisonous fruit, it's not poisonous to everyone. It might be nutritious to someone, it just depends who you are. Bottom line, you have to have knowledge of what it is you're doing. And that whole thing, you know, the, the quote, you will know them by their fruits, is hilarious. I have to share this with you. Um, it's hilarious because it is a basically like a, isn't it a biblical saying, a religious saying, you shall know them by their fruits. Well, guess what? If you look at parents and then you look at children, children would be considered the fruits of the parents, right? Or if you have a teacher and then you have students, the students would be considered the fruit of the teacher, right? Well, if you have an all-powerful father and then he creates angels, then the angels would be the fruit. It wasn't Lucifer an angel? So you will know them by their fruits or you have the father creator and then you have the human race which you know the people who believe in this stuff call god the father well then the children the people are the fruit of the god so you will know the god by the fruit do you see what i'm saying here catching my drift next comment comes from josh galloway and they say I like this video. I have watched all your videos and I still have not emailed. I have listened with wonderment at your knowledge with this subject. I fess it is gun shy. Thanks for this formative video. Kindly. Thank you for your comment, Josh. Uh, feel free to email me anytime you feel squirrely. Don't be shy. Next comment comes from Strawberry Milk and they say, Kind of got me wondering. If a fellow would teach classes eight hours a day, five days a week, how long, you suppose, one could get all this down? On average, of course. Well, I don't know of any fellow that teaches classes eight hours a day, five days a week. And I definitely don't know of any entity or institution that would be able to pay that teacher the value that those classes would be worth. What I do know is I've been doing workshops in teaching a curriculum, teaching classes for about five years now, and I have had people learn it in one one-hour workshop. I've also had people do, you know, like 20 workshops, and they still haven't learned it. But on average, strawberry milk, in the last 365-day cycle, I've had people learn this in about four to five, maybe six workshops on average. And that's one hour workshops. So that's five to six hours, four to five hours. It just depends upon you 
and your motivation to learn it and how much you're willing to put into it. Because what you put in is what you get out. Rule one, rule equal. Final comment comes from Fast Eddie Pool, And they say within brackets and quotations for the question hyphen claim of the number 33 choice. So we have the cause, which is the for the question claim. And then what's it concerned with? The number 33 choice. <clears throat> what is possessing the number 33 choice? The possible melt performance commencement temperature level of the frozen water. Or with the random quantity choice of the spontaneous streams content creators challenge concept with this query by a curious competent viewers contract closure quest well i would have to say that competency is not quite established yet fast eddie pool because you've put this in brackets and quotations you have not authorized it meaning you haven't not put a correct name to it so the competency is a little bit in question in my mind. And I publish this because if you take away the, the brackets and the quotations, look at the correct sentence structure. The sequencing of positionals is 100% correct. Well done, Fast Eddie Pool. Well done. And on the surface, it looks like a, a very educated intelligent correct sentence structure but when i look at it i see huge compound facts that make it very very confusing and what i've done with correct sentence structure in the last five years of doing this is to take this distill it down to its simplest form so that because correct sentence structure right off the bat is already difficult for most people to read that don't know correct sentence structure. Like if you don't know correct sentence structure and you read one of my sentences, most people can kind of get an idea of what I'm saying because I've simplified it so much. I've distilled it down. All right? But when you write things like this, it's just not efficient communication. So I'm going to go into what I mean here. When you take a compound fact like number hyphen 33 hyphen choice or actually more specifically, possible hyphen melt, hyphen performance, hyphen commencement, hyphen temperature, hyphen level. I mean, in a correct sentence structure contract dictionary, you would have to have one, two, three, four, five, six finite means each for possible melt, performance, commencement, temperature, and level. And then not only that, you would have to have a finite mean for the whole compound fact. Possible melt performance commencement temperature level. That's why when I gave Kuliana this comment, I asked for closure on those compound fact finite means. I want to know, what does he mean by that? Is he competent? to stand on the geometric level playing field of contract. And of course, he's more than welcome to email me and uh, request 10 to 15 minute consultation and we can discuss this very thing if it would help him in his learning knowledge cultivation journey. Uh, again, you know, random quantity choice. What is the finite mean for that? He would need a finite mean for random, a finite mean for quantity, a finite mean for choice, and a finite mean for random quantity choice or spontaneous streams content creators challenge concept that's another six words in a compound fact or curious competent viewers contract closure quest that's seven words so for a seven word compound fact you would need eight finite means in your dictionary you see where i'm going with this from the very beginning i've taught students use as little compound facts as, ne as, as necessary. Uh, keep it low. Keep it like two, maybe three facts in your compound facts, if possible. But if not, K 
keep it down to one uh, fact. Because the more facts you put in your compound fact, the more work you're making for yourself. Now there are some avo unavoidable ones like correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, right? But I, I didn't create that one. All right, that was already there when I came here. Now that had already been established. So what I'm doing is I'm talking about the, the facts that I create for my own construct are very simple. I don't use huge compound facts because it's my volition that everyone, whether they have a good knowledge of this grammar or not, can cognize what I'm trying to convey. I'm here to be understood, not misunderstood. So Fast Eddie Pool, I commend you on your efforts here. I'm not trying to discourage you in any way. I'm trying to give you a little gentle uh, counsel because you did comment on my channel. And this is a grammar channel and I'm a grammar tutor. Flat out telling you, it is better for my experience to not use huge compound facts. Because to me, that's indicative of someone who probably doesn't have a dictionary and probably has not given closure, correct sentence structure closure to those elements of their compound facts. I could be wrong. You might have a huge dictionary with 5,000 words in it with all these compound facts. I don't know. But it's definitely indicative also of someone else that I'm aware of who uses huge compound facts and also particles of negation in their facts, which, by the way, Fast Eddie did not do, which is, again, commendable. I, I really admire the the effort it must have taken to write this. Maybe it was no effort at all. <coughs> Sorry. Maybe it was no effort at all for him, but it's a very, very cool thing for me to read as a tutor. Even though I didn't teach this guy, really. You know, I don't think we've ever done a workshop or anything, but wherever he did learn it, to me, it looks like I know where he learned most of his structure from, but I could be wrong again. Anyways, thanks, Fast Eddie. Maybe someday we'll get that consult and we'll get some of these questions answered. Thanks for watching. Once again, I apologize for the, the head cold and my voice. Uh, hopefully I'll be over this in a couple more days. If you'd like to learn this, go ahead and hit me up at the email address at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can join the, the membership and get some exclusive content in the members section, live streams and things like that. And uh, I'll see you next time.